Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Victoria's Creations. Um, I do apologize, this video was taking so long. I had to learn to use a new machine. So, a little bit of hiccups in this video. Um, you are going to see most of it on my old machine, but let's get into it. So, for this video, you are going to need about two yards of fabric, one yard for the top, one yard for the bottom. If you need to make it longer, just extend the amount of fabric you're getting. But yeah, let's jump right in and I'll show you how to make this table runner. So for this project, you will need to cut out four squares and then 16 little ones, so four of each color. So these ones are cut out five by five and these are 2.5. So get those cut out and we'll start piecing them together. You're gonna take all your little squares and on the wrong side of the fabric, you just want to draw a line across a diagonal. So I'm just going to take my ruler, place it in the two corners, and I'm going to just draw a line. So do that with all your remaining pieces, and then we're going to start stitching them onto our bigger squares. So I drew my lines in all of my little squares. Now, as I have 16 of these and I have 16 large squares, you're going to take your little square, you're going to put it in the corner of one of your big squares. You're going to stitch across that line you drew on every single one of your large squares. So every single one of these should have one of these stitched to it. So let's stitch all these together and then we'll come back and we'll show you what to do next. So I've stitched them on the corner. So now what we're going to do is we're going to trim this corner off. So the part that overlaps here on this corner, we're going to trim that. So I just fold it and cut it off. Don't cut through your secondary fabric. So now it just looks like that. So now we're just gonna flip this over and we're gonna iron that. So now it'll look like that. So I have my other pieces ready to go here. So when I line them up like this, you're gonna start to see what our square is gonna look like. So now we're going to start to stitch these together. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to fold it over, I'm going to stitch here. I'm take this one, I'm going to fold it over, I'm going to stitch here. And then once you come back from there, you'll have two pieces stitched together, like that. Then you're going to take the pieces that you stitched together, and you're going to flip them over onto here, and you're going to sew down there until you have one big block. So let me do that, and then we'll move on. So here's my first square. It's not 100% even. I'm okay with that. I want it to look a little weird. Um, just shows it's handmade. If you're picky, you can just make sure you line up your seams a little more. On the back, I have pressed open all of my seams with my iron. So now I'm going to finish up my other squares. So you should have, I'm going to have four of these. If you want to make your table runner longer or shorter, just take in or out how many squares you're doing. But I'm going to finish up the rest of my squares, and then we're going to move on to the heavyweight iron-on fusing. Got all my squares sewn. I've ironed open my seams so they lay nice and flat. So now we're going to attach our squares. So you can have fun with it. They don't have to be the same colors. You can make it so that they're a little different on each one. So just kind of lay them out, see how you want them to look. So I think I'm going to go with this option. And then you're just going to sew them all together. So you'll have one long strip of your squares. So I'm going to do that. So I have my piece completely sewn together. We're ready to apply our interfacing now. So if you're using interfacing, you really want to use a heavyweight. I'm just using what I have on hand, which is a midweight. I didn't have enough for the one long strip, so I cut into two pieces. So you're going to flip your project over and you're... Interfacing will have like a shiny side. That's the side that has the glue. So that's the side you want facing down on the fabric. So just put your interfacing on there and then just iron it on. Okay, so I've got my interfacing on here. Mine is sewing, so I just pinned it because I'll just sew it on. But iron on is much easier. So now you can either do your quilting stitches now, or you can do it when you have it together. 
I'm going to do the quilting stitches on this part now because I want the quilting only on this part. I don't want it to go on the back side. So I'm going to just to stitch in all of my seams, which is called stitch in the ditch. So I'm going to just stitch inside the seams matching my color threads and just kind of highlight those stitches. So let me do that. So I did one with the stitch in the ditch. You can see it gives it a little more of a stitched look versus the one that I didn't do. So this is completely optional. You don't have to do the top stitching. I am just going to finish off my little white squares with all this top stitching and that's as much as I'm doing. But let me get these all stitched and then we'll move on to the next part. So I have my inner piece all sewn together. And this is going to be my outer piece. So right now it's just folded in half. So we're going to unfold it. And then we are going to take our inner piece and line it up. And we are just going to stitch down here. So I have a whole bunch of extra on the bottom that I'm going to cut off at the end. I just didn't feel like doing exact measurements for this because I wanted to be quick, easy, no math solution. So I recommend what you do is sew your inner pieces all together. Then when you have the length of that, take a yard of fabric, lay it out long way like this, and then you know exactly how much to cut off. You don't have to cut this before you start doing this. Do this first then lay it on here, sew it, and then cut off the excess. So all I'm going to do is stitch this line here. So I'm going to take it to my machine, I'm going to stitch it, and I'll come back. So I've stitched my two pieces together all the way up. I still have not cut this off. I'm not going to cut it off yet because I don't want to make it wobbly when I cut it. So I'm going to leave it for a little longer. What I want you to do next is press your seams towards your larger fabric. So here's my seam. I have it pressed towards my floral one, which is my larger fabric that is not my inner fabric. And give a nice press on the top too. I can't tell you how much this affects your items when you press them. It's going to give you a much cleaner, nicer look. So get that pressed and then we're going to move on to the next step. So I have this sewn here. The next thing we're going to do is sew it to this side. So take your end and just fold it over so your right sides are together. Line it up. And then you're just going to stitch down this line. And then I want you to press it open. After you've done that, you're going to have your excess here. Now is a good time to cut that off. So let me get this sewn and then we'll cut that off. We'll go on to the next step. So here's what it looks like now. I have it stitched here and I have it stitched here. So it's one big piece of fabric. So now what you're going to do is inside it out. So let me get that done and we'll move on. So here's what it looks like now. So now we want to make our space on this side and our space on this side the same size. So use your ruler, measure how much this side is. So right there I have four inches and here I have three. So I'm going to want to make this side a little bigger. Once I have these the same size, iron it in place. So you got a nice crease on your ends. And then we're going to do some little bit of weird stitching which is going to finish off these ends and I'm going to show you that. Okay, so here it is. I've ironed out my edges here. So now take it, flip it over so your back is up, and you're going to take one side, you're going to just fold it in half, and then pin the edges. So I'm pinning my raw edges. And then you're going to do a quarter inch seam stitch across the top here. 
and across your other side. So both sides are going to be stitched, fold in half, your right side should be on the outside. Okay, so I have my end stitched. Now what I'm going to do is on my folded edge, I'm just going to clip the corner here. Don't cut through your stitching. So I'm just going to take it, just going to give it a little bit of a clip like that. Come to this folded edge, do the same thing. Okay, now we're going to open it up. So pretend it's a hood, like you're gonna put it on your head and just do this. Okay, so it looks like that. And then press the seam, not here, just the seam. And do that on both sides. Now we're gonna inside out this part. So we're just going to kind of push it in like this, poke your corner out. Do the same thing with the other side. So there's that. So the next thing you want to do is stitch down your opening so that it doesn't lose things inside of it. So make it straight. And I like to press it here so when I'm sewing it, it doesn't move. And then I'm just going to do an edge stitch right across here. Any stitch you want. I am going to do a zigzag stitch. So that's my table runner. So let's move on to making some placemats. So the placemats are going to be assembled similar to the table runner. I don't have enough of the white to do for the center squares. So I'm not going to put those on my placemats. If you wanted to do that, you would have to cut four squares per mat and they're measured five inches by five inches. But what I did is I cut out four per color of each square, eight inches by 11 inches for my squares. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with my table runner. I am going to sew these together into a square. So I'm gonna stitch these together. Then I'm gonna do the purple and the pink and then stitch them together until I have one big square. So let me do that and then press my seams and I'll be back. So I got my square sewn together. Again, I didn't put my little one in here only because I didn't have enough. The next thing you're going to want to do, um, this is optional. I'm not doing this because I don't want to buy heat bond or any more interfacing. But you can buy heat bond, which would be something that goes in between your pace placemat. It's going to make it a little more sturdier. And it's going to keep heat from going through it. So you can hold it underneath and not burn your hand. Or you can use more interfacing, midweight, heavyweight, whatever you have on hand. I have none left of anything, so I am just going to continue on to finishing this up. So I have cut out another piece of fabric. I ran out of my pretty purple fabric, so we're just using white. I cut this 15 by 21. I'm going to lay them wrong sides together. And I am going to stitch all the way around all four corners, leaving a small spot open so that I can turn it. So let's do that. Okay, so I've stitched it. I clipped my corners. Now we're going to right side it out. So then smooth it out and then just do a top stitch around and you got a placemat.
I hope you guys like this video for making a placemat and table runner. I found it really fun and cute, and I can't wait to make next month's project. If you haven't already, go over to the Monthly Project Facebook channel and join in on our projects so we can see what you make. And please like and subscribe for future videos. Have a great day, everyone. Can't wait to see your projects.